months. It has been a crazy last couple of months here on Bright Side Farms. I don't even know what to do with myself. I'm finally getting in the swing of things. Um, we just have so much going on. We have new additions. Hopefully you can see them running about. These are our new Americana chicks. They will give us blue eggs. We have four of them. We actually got them on sale for some reason. Tractor Supply was trying to get rid of all their toddler chicks. Those are basically chicks that are older than a week old, I think. Um, and they were only 25 cents, so of course I had to scoop them up. I can't believe that anyone would leave them. Insanity. I'm going to come in here real quick and turn off my radio so you can hear me. That's better. So I made a makeshift little pen for them outside. They have their food and it's very difficult for me to make sure they're getting enough food. Um, so because all of the animals are out here in the barn, we have, I took down the fence. So we have the chicken coop nesting boxes over there, a little redneck. You know, if it's free, you make it work. This cost us nothing. So we did that. John put up a shelf for me up here so I can have instant, um, if I need like corn to call the chickens in or we use sweet feed for the goats to call them in. Um, this is the goat shelter. It's just an old dining room table that got busted. We were using it for crafts for the kids. I leave a tarp over it. Um, Hazel and Louie, the two sisters, they actually sleep on top up here. And then Daisy will sleep down there. So I like to leave the tarp on because it makes cleaning so much easier. They poop all over the top of that. And then I made this cool little thing. It is um, fencing. It's old metal fencing. And the goats just come up here and pull their hair out, hay out, and there's less mess on the ground. And then they have their mineral bucket. And that glass bowl I actually wash out every night. That is the girls' is the sister's sweet feed at night when I'm milking Daisy. I went down to milking her once a day. And I'm still getting 24 ounces, which I was getting 32. I'm okay with that, though, because she literally lost like all of her hair and we couldn't figure out what was going on with her we were thinking maybe mites couldn't find anything in her um and i'm pretty sure that it's hormonal now if any of you um have the extra funds and can take them to a vet i totally 100 percent recommend that but for us it's just not feasible right now it is not we are just scraping by which is fine i'm living the dream so i can't complain um then there's our milking stand. I really would like to move this into a separate part of where the chickens can't get on it because they get up here and they poop on my deck. And it just makes it very difficult because I literally scrub this down every night. Um, you want to make sure that you're 100% clean and our goat milk just goes to us. Hi, Daisy babies. Go say hi. It's the Daisy. Yeah, she lost, I don't know if you can really tell, but she lost a lot of hair on the top. Um, we are going to get them some ivermectin injectable because it's time for their warming. We did do, the last video you've seen, we did the um, pellets, the Manapro pellets. I'm thinking that's what their previous owner had given them. And I don't think it really worked for us all that well. I didn't give them... A high dose like you're supposed to um, so that could be it too I have nothing against the pellets there are some goats that it works great for and then there's some goats like mine that it just doesn't it doesn't help um, they're due for more wormer in the ivermectin clears out any mites lice and internal parasites I think it's three internal parasites but um, that's what we're looking at and you can do that twice a year you're not supposed to over worm them so, and they look good, they're healthy, they're happy, they're jumping and playing. I don't know if you guys seen the goat pen. I like to open all of the doors in here. It's the first time you guys have seen all the doors open. All three doors are open. Isn't that exciting? Sorry, I'm probably making you dizzy. 
Um, we have Maddox's old slide, and they love that. And an old kitty pen type thing that my niece had given us because the slide was broken, which goats don't care if a slide is broken. I wouldn't recommend any babies to slide down it because of that issue. That might cut somebody, but the goats just trample up and down it all day long. They love it. And the little baby chickens like to hide underneath of there. So, and then John, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to claim this one because I, I came up with the idea, but John helped me. We did the teeter-totter. So this was an old piece of wood. We have this PVC pipe thing, and you guys are probably, someone out there is yelling at me, that's not a PVC pipe. It is to me, because I'm a woman, and I just, I don't know what it's called. And we have this piece of wood that actually fit on it perfectly. So it's a two by four, a two by four, and then a sheet over top that was cracked. So he took another little piece of wood. Obviously it's a scrap because it's got a little burn marks on it. Um, and nailed it down and this is just a piece of plywood we'll see how long that lasts and I don't have high hopes for this little guy but Louie loves this thing and Hazel will not her sister Hazel will not get on it we've noticed that if Louie plays on this Hazel will stand right here and they just have a ball with it but yeah that's the teeter-totter and then we found a couple of old tires in the back property because we're starting to clean stuff up we weren't here last year um, so we're finding a lot of interesting things but I buried them halfway in the ground and the goats run up and jump on them and kick off and just have a good time. And there's the babies. The reason that I wanted to get on and I was very like adamant about it because so much is going on lately and it's nothing for me just to grab my phone and just know that if I get cut off, sorry, I'll continue tomorrow maybe. I don't have the luxury of knowing how to incorporate incorporate both videos um, into one like most people do so the qualities of my videos suck and probably the information I'm giving you is wrong but my hopes is to teach people what not to do if I make a mistake I want y'all to know about it this is what when our babies were three weeks old we had a spurt a week that was like 70 degree weather it was beautiful out here and I wanted to bring them out with the big chickens to kind of introduce them so the big chickens wouldn't attack them because you're never supposed to just throw babies in. Some people do, great. I'm glad that you have awesome chickens. My chickens are kind of mean though to the babies. So we brought the babies out and I made this makeshift little pen. Can you see that? And it has this, it's just green fencing on the top. I hope you can see it. But we put the babies in there with their food and water and they were pretty much in there all day um, at nighttime, I brought them into their coop that is actually in our entranceway because that's where I like to put chickens for some reason. But um, it's connected to the house, but it's not directly connected to the house. So you can't smell them. Um, their little heat lamp was in there. Once they were about three weeks old, I stopped the heat lamp because it was so warm. And they're doing great. I think they're, I want to say they're five, yeah, they're five weeks now. And I have them during the day, and they do great with the big girls the big chickens now but I did that for about a week and um, I had one hen it was I think Heather that would jump in there with them and like protect them so I was like great this is awesome as soon as I took them out of there thinking that she would protect them she was like gone didn't want anything to do with them so I was like crap but um they stay for the most part in here and as you could tell they could easily walk out into the barn out the doors and just kind of free range and do their thing but they choose not to they stay in here so I'm gonna let them stay in there I'm gonna let them decide um, and then they have their I've been keeping them the last couple of nights as soon as they turn five weeks old I had them in the barn I hope it's not windy I don't know where my microphone is um, I had them in the barn the last couple of nights so they're doing really really well and I don't know if I showed you I did show you but I actually have sides to that that flip up so um, in the middle of the night, no one can really get to them. There's a little tiny hole that they can get out of, but the bigger girls can't get in there. And it's working out good. They have hay for bedding. They have the goat scraps is what I like to call them. Um, and this is my new venture. It looks really trashy right now. It's a work in progress. I don't have a tiller. I don't have um, tractors. So I'm doing this all by hand because I want to. My husband works really, really hard all day long to pay the bills. And 
I don't want him to have to come home and shovel after shoveling all day long because he does concrete. So this is an introduction to our, it is 25 by 25, so it's a 100 square foot garden bed. I'm going to have two feet here of grass and then four feet, two feet, four feet, two feet, four feet you get, but I have four plots planned. Um, and right now I'm just kind of using the scraps that I have, old fencing. This is a um, trellis that I found back by the grapes that was getting busted up. So I brought that up for maybe my string bean, my beans, that my climbing beans, trellis beans. Yeah, it's a mouthful. And then this guy I have already have planted. So I don't know how this is going to work. This is my first year, you guys. I have never, I've gardened with my mother a little bit. Everything died. And then I tried gardening. That was when I was in my teens. I tried gardening again um, last summer. I planted some tomatoes and some bell peppers. I bought um, seedlings. It was like July. And they were out in the heat. And I was working full time, 12 hour shifts, nights. So they didn't get a whole lot of water. And I didn't have the time to do the research on them. So they pretty much died. But here, <laughs> they need sun, but I can't let them have sun because the goats will eat them. And we just had about two days of nothing but rain, so I know they're watered. I'm going to give them a little bit more water. I forgot to tell you what they were. These are the ends. You know when you go to the grocery store, and a lot of people are going to yell at me, but this is an experiment for me. You go to the grocery store and you get the romaine lettuce that comes three in a pack. Um, that's what this guy in the center is. He is the end and people tell you to you could take that when your when your romaine is finished you can take the end of it and you can put it in a bowl of water well we've been having it survive and we've been eating off of it um, I usually pluck some off like every two or three weeks we'll get enough and this guy I'm not quite sure what he is but he's some kind of lettuce and then over there in this other box I have celery which is doing very well I hope you guys can see I'm sorry I suck at this that's celery and then this is another lettuce but to keep the goats out of them and to keep them warm because right now it gets about uh, I'm gonna say like 30 or 40 at night it's just not good enough we're in northern Michigan so um, I keep these plastic bins over them and so far so good my experiment is working um, and then here in my sandy yucky looking soil is um, spinach I think it's the Great Royal. I'll have to tell you what the name of them is. But we have 30 spinaches there. Then we have purple carrots that I got from Baker Creek. And those really long, I think they're Manuka carrots or Manukai carrots or something. They're supposed to be the really, really long ones. And then here we have radishes. So that's what I've planted so far. Um, the radishes said to amend the soil with wood ash and... I kind of just went into our little fireplace in there and I grabbed some ashes so I hope that'll be okay. I tilted into the sand and it kind of just blew that way. So I'm really hoping that it won't ruin the carrots. So far so good. God's got me so we got this. And then we have our babies in my garden. That's why I can't leave anything uncovered. This is my dirt pile. I'm trying to dig about two feet down and these rows I want to say are 21 feet or 20 feet or something like that it's not a, an exact science because I didn't really bring a tape measure out here I just kind of used my four foot bamboo poles and said okay this will work for me so that's what I have um, this was exciting so all of these things, I had to pull these roots. There's a dead tree right here. I don't know if you can see it. There's a dead stump right there. And these roots are all dead. So they weren't as hard to pull out, but it was a lot of work for like, me doing it by myself. I hope you're not getting too much wind. This probably this video is probably not gonna turn out. But um, I'm planning to do two more on this side. But I got everything that needed to be in the garden right now in the garden. Um, so I'm trying to focus more on the fence because I'm expecting those to pop, I think, in a week, hopefully. 
Um, so there's that. And then this is what I do to straighten out. When you buy, let me turn around. I hope I'm not making you too dizzy. When you buy fencing, it comes in a roll, okay? When you take the roll out, um, it's really hard to work with. It doesn't straighten out well. So what I do is I took my eight foot bamboo poles. This is what I'm famous for, are these bamboo poles. I cut them in half and you can use them for absolutely anything. Um, and I staked them to the ground and we're gonna leave that for the day and it will straighten out. It will be easy to work with. I won't have to be worried about it because I could show you the other one and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Those of you that have been working with fencing your entire lives, you're like, oh my gosh, this girl. Sorry, this video is for you, but it's not for you. It's for people like me that have no idea what we're doing and you have to learn from your mistakes. Someone can, like, you can watch all the YouTube videos all day long and write notes like I have been doing, but you're still not going to get it until you mess up really and kill something. <sighs> Thankfully, it's none of my livestock. This is what I was talking about. So, when I made the little chicken coop, see this roll? This has been here for like three weeks, two weeks, but it's still really hard to work with. And then another thing that you can see is when I did my goat fencing, John got me, I think it's a hundred foot roll. Um, it's really wavy. And I tried my hardest, but I had to do this all on my own. I don't have a wire stretcher. I don't even know if I did this right, guys. But it, it works. I only had one mishap where um, Louie is my escape convict. She likes to try to jump out. We had one issue where she jumped up on here and she actually got her little tiny foot stuck. That's why that's bent. And she was dangling there for like five seconds and I thought I was gonna have a heart attack. I'm not, I don't work very well under pressure. And then over on this side, I took a great big huge beam that I found someplace and I just leaned it against, um, leaned it up against the wall of the garage. Ooh, I better fix that guy. <clears throat> fix it up the wall so that they can't get out. They can't squeeze out. Daisy was squeezing out through there. Um, from my understanding, this pen will not work for a billy goat. Billy goats, I've heard, are a lot more mischievous. And if they want their girls, they are going to break out. So I don't know what to do. <laughs> We are looking for a male Nigerian dwarf um, when the expenses are forgiving, I guess you could say. We're doing all right. We are, we're not suffering. My kids have food in their belly. I just don't want to add one more expense, um, especially a male because of the acidosis. There's different things that you have to do for males. But, um, we do have 15 chickens coming from Hoover's Hatchery. We got the Hatchery Choice Rare. Um, basically, that's where they just take 15 rare chickens and stick it in a box and mail it to you. I don't know how you guys feel about this. Um, I tried doing my research, but there's not really much out there. I didn't have them immunized for Merricks or for... I hope I'm saying this right, but cockeye, kokai, they're very, very important things to keep your eye out for. I know how to treat that. I can go to Tractor Supply, um, and I'm always here. I don't work at all. So if I notice that someone's down and out, I'm on it. I'm really on it. I actually spent, I spent the night out in the barn with my goats because Daisy was acting kind of funny when she was going through her hormonal changes. And basically what it was is I was milking her too much. She wasn't getting enough nutrition. Um, being a first time goat owner and a dairy um, goat owner at that, you don't know. I mean, you look up on the, the symptoms online and they're like, um, I think the biggest thing was people were thinking that she had um, that coke eye that, where they have diarrhea, but she wasn't having runny poops her poops were fine so had no idea and then I had someone pop on there and just say it's hormonal stop milking her twice twice a day and I have noticed a huge difference within the last I would say week um, her hair has grown back immensely 
We did everything. I'm trying to remember what we treated them with. We did give them something probably about a month ago. This has been going on for about a month and a half. That's why I haven't really been on because I was worried that it was killing my goats. Um, right after that wormer, they did great for about a week and things just got really crazy around here with seed starting and all of that and it just got really crazy and then all of a sudden I was paying more attention to my, my garden and uh, I wasn't keeping an eye on my goats and everyone had diarrhea. This is a different occasion it's just something it's always something with goats it's always something so i promise you guys from now on i will keep you involved in the loop and let you know every day i'll try to do at least a 20 minute video it won't be edited because i suck at editing it takes up way too much time and having a homestead if you guys want to call it that this is what i call it it's my farm i am very proud of this farm it's going to be huge one day um it's very difficult your entire like everything that you have in you goes into it so I hope that you guys can learn from my mistakes that's my biggest um, my thing and if I have easier way of doing things um, that's what I'm gonna do a lot of the tips and tricks that I learn are from Jess and Maya from Roots and Refuge and she said on one of her recent um, videos that um, you just do what you have to do basically so I'm here doing it. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope someone out there learned something from it. If not, my kids are watching this from 20 years from now and saying, oh, that's how they did it. So it's a win-win for me. So I hope you guys have a great day and thank you for watching.